Welcome to the Goof and Goober Show. You decide who's the goof and who's the goober. Join Matthew and Regan as they talk all things from their own personal life questions to reviews on movies and TV shows. Now, your hosts, Regan and Matthew. What's going on, guys? It is your boys. Uh, I am your host today, Regan, and uh, we have got a show for you guys. We're really excited just to get out there and uh, talk to you guys about this week. Um, Matthew, I don't know what you're doing right now. I'm just face- Oh, my mom just FaceTimed me and we're live. Right on, Hello. right. Why don't you go check out the stream? Um, the podcast. We're right now. Oh, gosh. Twitch.tv slash. Uh, Goofy Goober. Goober. Instagram. Oh, the Goofy Goober it, Show. It, Underscore. Go ahead, thanks, mom. thanks, Mom, for oh, ruining my intro. That. Oh, man. Sorry. Um. Matt, what is going on? How you doing? Uh, it's been a while. Well, it's been a week. It's been a week. Uh, how's your week been? been? Dude, my week has been all right. It's been all right. Look, yeah. my, I work a sales job at home, and mm-hmm. it has been kind of brutal. I applied for a sales management position, and mm-hmm. they gave it to another guy. And Oof. this is... This is the third time I've applied and uh, haven't gotten it. So, um, yeah. But other than that, freaking crushing it. That's all that matters. Freaking so, killing it. I mean, uh, I don't know how in depth you want to go with that, Matt. Um, mm. But how are you feeling about that? Like uh, not getting the job. I think a lot of the people have probably gone or been in through the same similar situation, not getting the job that they've been wanting or just. You know, I've been in that situation as well. So what would you, I guess, what kind of encouragement would you give to somebody who is in that boat with you? Look, it, <clears throat> excuse me, because it doesn't get easier. It doesn't get easier, um, you know, until it happens. I'm a firm believer that God, and again, we're a Christian podcast, so we're going to yep. talk about Jesus. Jesus has his own time. God has has his own time. And when his time to put me into the place wherever he's putting me, he's going to do it. Um, Am I bummed right now that it's the third time that I've applied? Yes. But in the end, that's, uh, you know, God's got my back. And, and, you know, if it's truly where he wants me to be, he's going to put me there. So, you know, yes, inside I'm, I'm upset. I'm not mad at God or anything like that. I'm just, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready for the next step. I'm ready to see, hey, where are you taking me? Yeah. And oftentimes it's it's where you're at right now. And no, I, yeah. sometimes it's the change, change isn't what he wants. Maybe he wants you here for now. And a year or two from down, down the road, things might change and, and he might have a different plan. So, No, I am totally on board with you there. Um, I think when you called me about that, um, we, you know, I've, we, I've been on the same boat and we, we, we were kind of like yelling out to each other. Like, it's not that I don't want to like, it's like, uh, how do we put it? Jonah. Tell going me to where to go. Just, just tell me. Go. I will, just I will be, I, I want to be used. Just tell me where to go and I'll go there. I'm not like Jonah that just like, I don't want to go to Nineveh. I'll go wherever you want. And you it's want like me to go across seas. I'll freaking do it. I'll do it. At this point, I'm just. I want you to just let me know. Let us Lord, know. Lord Please. guide me right now. Lord Please. guide me. It's is, yeah. but uh, it's patience and path. endurance. Yeah, it is a difficult path because it's like, and I talk to a, like, yeah. You know, there's a lot of people who aren't Christians who I work with who they're like they message me and they're like, dude, how do you feel? And for me, I'm just like. I want to just tell them I'm so pissed off and my life just sucks. And I feel like, you know, God's not giving me what I want. But in the end, it's like, in the end, I never had control over it anyway. It's his, it's his plan. And I'm just on the ride. So, well, if Lincoln park has ever taught any of us, anything is that it's in the end, it doesn't even matter, baby. Mm -hmm. I try so hard. And got, so, got far. so far, but in, in the, the end, end, it doesn't, doesn't even matter. 
okay, guys, we're going to get going. I want to kind of get over an overview of what we're going to be talking about this week. We're going to go over some of the new trailers. If you guys didn't watch the uh, halftime or the Super Bowl, there was a lot of new trailers that came out yesterday. And uh, boy, did it get hot. It got real spicy. Um, so, guys, get we're going to go over those. We're going to go over four of those trailers. We're going to then talk about The Last of Us. Oh, greatest TV series, I think, in the making. Um, as okay. well as we will end it with weekly hauls. But before we get into all of that, we will need Matthew to access his cellular device because, Matthew, we are going into what's in your refrigerator. Last week, Matthew, if you weren't listening to last week, guys, I'm going to give you a little snippet of what happened. Sorry, of last week. Matthew uh, made a new segment of what's in your refrigerator. And he had me get on my cellular device. Oh, geez, I got the burps. And access uh, and show everyone my refrigerator. What's in my refrigerator? It's kind of like MTV Cribs, um, but it's in what's your refrigerator. So, Matthew, hop to it. Come on. People are waiting. Come on, man. People want to see it. I'm getting it. Okay, I'm doing it. Oh, gosh. Yeah, sorry, guys, about that. The cat. No, no, they were talking about us singing. Oh, was that? <laughs> yeah. Wow. It's it's getting, I don't know, my cat's here. And if you hear a meow, it's me because of my cat. And my cat also messes with um, all this. All right, you're going to have to mute yourself there. Yep, you're good. You're good. You're good. All right, Matthew, bring us to your refrigerator. We're we're in a Oh gosh. This is great. This is great. Oh gosh. Mm-hmm. Okay. The refrigerator. Okay, get all right, guys. Get ready. This is big time. Big time. Turn that camera around, Matt. Let's see that. Uh, you, <laughs> Matthew. It's just tech, man. Just figure it out, man. People are waiting. We want to see the refrigerator. <laughs> Stop! Don't even be like. Oh gosh. <laughs> Oh gosh, get out of here, dude. Get out of here. You're the worst. <laughs> mm. Okay. Yum, yum, yum. Mm -mm, not at all, man. I'm there with you. <laughs> Big time. <laughs> no, it's, I would rather have the real thing, man. I'd rather have the freaking real thing. It's true. Oh, gosh. Oh. Oof. Oof. Give it to me. Give me to me, baby. Oh. Slap that bad boy. Friggin' slap that bad boy. Yes, please. 
gets it doesn't get better. It does not get better than that, guys. Margaritaville. What are you doing at Margaritaville? Freaking bad boy. Okay, okay. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. there you go. All right, uh, Matthew. I gotta ask. Oh, <laughs> I gotta ask. And people that are dying, they're they're blowing up the chat. People are blowing up the chat here. Um. Uh, Reese Dvorak wants to know what makes your refrigerator different than all other refrigerators. What what's so special about yours? Okay. Yeah. Uh huh. Mm hmm. No two trips. No two trip ponies, man. You're a one trip bo- man. Hmm. This is impressive. Wow. <laughs> Not mine. I had to buy mine, man. I had to buy mine straight from the store. But hey, let's give it up. Uh guys in the comments, let's give it up for Matt for showing us his uh, his newer fridge. Uh we're gonna here, let me uh hang on real quick. Let me get the, the clapping. There we go. I don't know if you can hear that, Matt, but we're clapping right now for you. We're really proud of you. Um, way to go, everyone. Um, really happy for you. Thank you. Okay, you now you can head back. My cat's trying to uh, get on. Uh, this is. I don't want my cat on the ground right now because she's going to mess with my cords. Oh, God. <laughs> can we get back to the podcast, man? <laughs> Um, the cat will mess with my HDMI cord and all that stuff. Um, but guys, we are also now going to take a look at some of the trailers. If you weren't watching the Super Bowl yesterday, which congratulations to the Kansas City Chiefs, which is kind of ironic that episode five of The Last of Us was in Kansas City, and it was the last time that Joel and Ellie are going to be in Kansas City. Um, Coincidence? I don't think not. Uh, You got to unmute yourself there, Matt. You're still still unmuted. My guy. (laughs) Sorry, technical difficulties. So (laughs) wait, how did you know that they're not going to be in Kansas City any longer moving forward? Hmm. Uh, Watch the move. I watched the... uh, Oh cat hairs all over the place i watched the episode dude (laughs) i gotta get my eyes on those things around here man um anyways so uh we're gonna get into some of these trailers uh if you guys didn't see there's the new flash we're gonna talk a little bit about that we're gonna watch it then we're gonna watch uh the indiana jones trailer uh guardians of the galaxy and then a movie i didn't even know or heard about until yesterday and i sent matthew a message about it uh it's a movie called 65 so i will just gonna... give a caveat before we jump into it this is on my most anticipated list apparently of 2023, this freaking movie so mm-hmm. you better freaking enjoy it regan yeah well i'll tell you what i am uh i gotta make sure i do this and we're gonna start sharing my screen so this right now guys is the flash trailer we're gonna take a look um oh gosh uh my cat is jumping all over no you're you're done we're done no sorry um here we go i hate cats man tell me something you can go anywhere another timeline another universe so why do you want to stay 
and fight to save this one. Because this is the world where my mom lives. I'm not gonna lose her again. Time has a pattern that it can't help reliving. Different people, different worlds, drawn to each other like magnets. My face. So my face. If you were to go into the past, you have no idea what the consequences can be. Bruce, I could fix things. You could also destroy everything. This can't be happening. I completely broke the universe. Saad, we've been waiting for you. I created a world with no metahumans. And now there's no one to defend us. Want some help? I did. If I can't get back, there might not be a future. What's the play? Batman, what do we do? We try not to die. Not Clark. My name is Kara. I, I'm well, Barry. Barry. Barry, what are you doing? Our kids are gonna want to see this. June sixteenth. My word, guys. Uh, does that not get you pumped a little bit? I mean, I when I saw that, I mean, there's a lot of things that we can talk about here. But Michael Keaton coming back, let's go! He's coming freaking back, baby! He's, He's coming, coming back. back with. I mean, you got an all star crew where you know we're. I mean, DC is going back, going to the the multiverse, um, multiverse way as Marvel looks like, and. It's looking good. It does look good. I, I'm excited. It got me pumped. Matthew, my question, though, with this whole thing is Ezra Miller. He is uh, not the best of guys. Not uh, – I I don't know. Like, he, he – they are trying to – yeah, I would agree. They're trying to save their franchise here and get things back. We've had this conversation about DC, about they got to just kind of – well, you believe they just need to wait two to five years. I don't think they necessarily need to wait two to five, two to five years to get this back on track to be something competitive with Marvel. But Ezra Miller, let me, give me your thoughts on him. I don't like the guy, man. I don't um, think anyone does. I don't think anybody does, but that, that that's the... Uh, I don't know. The the way I look at it is like... And I preached this, and I said this on the last friggin' pod, is that I think that they should have done an overhaul, new cast, new... Like, Ben Affleck, he, he's a good Batman, okay? So yep. we can keep him. But for the ones that are obvious reasons as to, like, negativity towards DC... Get him out. Get him out. Like Ezra Miller, all he brings is negative publicity to them. And yes, there's the idea of negative publicity is publicity, right? But the guy's a 
The guy's a jerk. He's an idiot. He's, an he's idiot. not going to stay he's around long enough. No, okay. He's not going to so, stay around long enough. Okay. And well, I think, look, okay. I will say, and my final thought on Ezra Miller, okay, when, when we first saw Ezra Miller, I thought he was great as Flash. Great. But now we're tying Flash, the superhero, the person who's going to save – save multiple different universes right because that's what that's what they're going to push for the flashpoint right if we're going to have a guy who's going to play a superhero to save the, the multiverse and all these universes like i don't want negative connotation towards that type of character right like when when robert downey jr right robert downey jr you know he went through his hard times went to jail did drugs all that stuff got sobered up and then he got the iron man role right mm -hmm. like he had his downfall he had now his redemption where is ezra miller's redemption right like he it was just like less than a year ago that he was put in jail for a dui or something like that and like assaulting it was a worse than that it was, he kidnapped it was somebody yeah, he kidnapped a woman a girl yeah, he's easily replaced. I, I definitely think that there are people that are out there that could definitely fill his role. But here's the thing. With Flash, you have to do it right. You have to do it right because if you don't do it right, now Flashpoint and everything else is screwed. That's that. He is my main concern with the overhaul. The two to five years, let people forget about everything he's done, right? Kind of like... Robert Downey Jr., get clean, get sobered up, stop living the lifestyle that he has, stop bringing negative publicity, and then come back. Okay. I would rather have that than just jumping in, what, six months ago, less than a year ago, he just got into a DUI and, and had a big fight with police, right? Like, that's my whole gripe with him. I think as Flash, he's going to do fine as an actor. Yeah, I think that's going to be fine. But as I'm sitting in the movie theater... I don't want to think about this jackbag who is just not a good human being, right? Like, and it comes back to like the Christian perspective that we have is like, we don't want to support things that are your people or things that are of negative nature, if that makes sense, right? Like of, of sinful nature. And, and yes, we're, we're all not perfect, but when yeah. you're blinted with well, those types of things, that's where I have a problem. Well, yeah, I think the Thrun uh, is right that he is also accused of child sex. Now or suspected of child sex. Yeah, yeah. So well, I can't support that. And that's one of the reasons see, why I like, don't really want to do you, this. Dude. And that's kind of hard for me to – I mean, Michael Keaton's back, and I, I love that. But I think they could have gone – I mean – Grant Gustin from the actual series of The Flash could have done this. And I think – Everybody loves that series with with the Flash. It wasn't necessarily a bad series or anything like that. Your mic's not working. Was that? Your mic's not working. My mic's not. No, my mic's coming in. Your mic's not working. I can't hear you. You can't hear me. I I it shows that my mic is coming in. None of our mics are working. No, your mic is working. None of ours are. Yeah, it's street. working. Can't hear anything. Who is? He's working. Matthew, your mic is really low. That's what the heck. You're you just need to get closer Both to your mic. Both microphones are working. I can't hear you at all. <laughs> what? <laughs> you're just gonna have to struggle through it, man. Anything? Okay. You well, I I'm gonna keep going with my point here. Um, you figure that out, Matt. But Michael Keaton's coming back. I okay. it's a great opportunity to kind of reset this whole thing i do have a i do have a a slight there's a part in this trailer that i was like is that the bruce wayne with uh christian bale um especially with the motorcycle scene um it could be just that michael keaton got a new whole new design because his Batmobile is, you know, we saw that, but then there's this new motorcycle. And is that um, Ben Affleck's motorcycle, which we know that it's not, but also, I don't know. It's it's going to be interesting to see because we are now in the multiverse and any Batman's basically on the table. 
And it would be so great to see Christian Bale working it, working it and, and jerking it, baby. That would be fantastic. Oh, Matt, it looks like his, uh, his microphone, his headsets died. So that's probably what the problem is. Can you hear us, Matthew? Matthew, are you there? Check, check, check. One, two, one, two. Oh, no. This is bad. Matthew? Okay. We're going to keep, we're going to keep trolling away. Um, sorry, Matt. We're just going to, we're going to keep going. I, I can't. Te technical difficulties. Everybody, I, everybody I loves. Hear, I can't hear anything. My mic literally, uh, it's not even charging. Nothing. So, I'm kind of ooh, going to have to go with the old, you're going to have to switch it up. Just switch, use something else. I'm going to have to tell you. What the heck? Gonna have to use something else there. Um, so now we're gonna get into Indiana Jones uh, Five: The Dial of Destiny. Um, we're gonna get into that. Let me share this screen here with you guys. And uh, Matthew is going to have to. He saw this already, so we're just gonna play this and we're gonna get into it. You have we met? My memory is a little fuzzy. Are you still a Nazi? Godfather. Get back. June 30th, guys. Um, let me stop this here. We are getting this back. Harrison Ford as the one and the only. Indiana Jones. It's kind of weird though, because we were told that Shia LaBeouf was going to be the new Indiana Jones, but that never really spanned out, which is weird because the last time we saw him, it was uh, Indiana Jones and Shia LaBeouf as his son. And Shia LaBeouf is nowhere to be seen in this. Um, I'm curious to see how they're going to react, how they're going to kind of plug this back in but um while matthew is one of the goofing goober guys is getting back on is just me your boy rag doog um and we're gonna talk about here we're without even matthew we said screw him we don't even care about him he's he's a loner um but we've got an all-time cast that uh is fantastic we wait, hang on. Let me make sure my uh, 
thing about Shia LaBeouf is out there. And I'm a big fan of Shia LaBeouf. Um, sometimes he's just a, some, he just gets crazy sometimes. You know what I mean? He's, he's a great actor. Don't get me wrong. Fantastic actor. Oh, is he back? Matthew. Well, I think my Astros A50s are done. Ooh. Done, done. I don't know what's up with them. They're not doing anything, but I'm just throwing my work headset. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, okay. Okay. So it's not even like... You're going to have to reset it. It's not even it. like powering on. Yeah, just reset it. You're going to have to do that. That's what I've done in the yeah. past. You have to hard reset it. I had to do it multiple times. It's easy. I'll, I'll, we could talk about that after. Uh, we have yeah. just watched Indiana Jones, Matt, and we're kind of talking about uh, Harrison Ford, Shia LaBeouf. It's not back in this. The last Indiana Jones we saw, Shia LaBeouf was in it, and we were kind of told and directed that mm-hmm. Shia LaBeouf is going to be taking over as the new Indiana Jones. Um, but Ooh. that did not span out, obviously, here. Um do you think it is because uh, Shia LaBeouf was not in it or uh, money issues? Um, I don't know. Oh, you got to get back into own, it, man. You got to get back only, in. It's his own, like Shia LaBeouf is his own guy. You know right. what I mean? Like he's his own person and yep. he's had his struggles. But from what I, what I, I was watching this video with him and the guy who plays Punisher. I can't remember his name. Um, I know who you're talking about. Long story short. Long story short. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he's Jewish now, I think, or something like that. Shia LaBeouf? Um, he's, yeah, cleaned up his life a lot. I thought he was like Christian. So, Christian, whatever. I don't know. Well, I have no clue. Yeah, keep going. Something like that. But uh, it can't be his... Yeah, John Bernthal. Um, it can't be. It's not going to be because he's a bad actor. He is a fantastic actor. Hundred um, percent. One of the best out there, actually. Um, just the way he, he's a method actor, so he lives and breathes his role when he's in that role, and he gives it like a thousand percent. The 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 thing that probably is going to kick him is is his past, and that has been reoccurring theme with some of these guys that we're talking about with like Ezra Miller, right? Like you have a past, right? Like you don't reward negativity, right? Just like people stopped hiring Shia LaBeouf, even though he's a fantastic actor, you know, because of his past. I think that's the same thing that should have happened with Ezra Miller. But I also think that Shia LaBeouf definitely, definitely is a fantastic actor. And yes, peanut butter Falcon, fantastic movie. Peanut Butter Falcon! Oh, oh, oh. Fantastic scene. Great time. You'll know if you've ever seen that movie. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. We watched that. Movie. Matthew and I watched that a while like, when, it, when it came out. But uh, yeah. one of the things I want to talk about with Shia LaBeouf, uh, if you ever watched the movie Fast Times at Ridgemont High, they did a script reading of that on YouTube, yes. I think, believe, during the pandemic, if I remember yes. correctly. And it is so funny to watch Shia LaBeouf in that because he plays uh, uh, Jeff Spicoli, and he, Jeff Spicoli, like everyone else, he's in it. They're like he's in they're, it, they're, dude. They're a regular actor, and then at, they're just reading the script. But Shia LaBeouf takes that to a whole nether, another another level. Like he's in it. He is him, and he's just like. That's just Shia LaBeouf. For him acting, he is that guy. That is my life and who I'm going to be. And so it's it's fantastic to watch him. I would agree. It, he even went as far in the movie, it's called Fury. He mm. goes and he, he, he punches out a tooth, the tooth that he has missing in that movie. He punched that tooth out and removed that tooth for that, that scene because he He's thought that boy. his his character needed his yeah. tooth to be gone. That's yeah. crazy. That is uh Shia LaBeouf. But uh, we actually do have a question. I kind of want to ask this. This is from uh, Reese Dvorak on our YouTube. Uh, he asks, well, he, I can make this a question. Can you have Indiana Jones without Harrison Ford? 
Yeah. You can? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. He's the one here- that's been there and he's always I mean, he's made that whole series. Can you say that? Yeah, I think you can. Why? Why? Yeah. Come on. Give me it the does. deeds. Indiana Jones is like it's it it the whole series Indiana Jones isn't like a character. It's like a it's like a culture. All right? It's like a okay. culture. It's like the light it's like the way of life, right? Like that's just like Harrison, anybody can portray it, right? Like Shia LaBeouf, obviously he's a guy who hopefully will take the range at some point, but Harrison Ford is just Harrison Ford, to be honest with you with with this. I've never been a huge fan of the Indiana Jones series, to be honest with you. So that's why I have more of like a open mind take on it. Um, And Harrison Ford's just getting old. Like the the longer (laughs) you pull him out, He's 80 and he's doing this though. That's crazy to me. Like I can't imagine my grandpa doing this. And he, I mean, he's just a BA kind of dude really is. But it's also like saying, it's also like saying, can you have hair? Can you have Han Solo without Harrison Ford? Well, yeah, I I think, think, I don't think you can with, with that character because I think Harrison Ford embodies that character perfectly and, right. and created it from from scratch and you could say the same thing with indiana jones but it's like indiana jones is just an adventure like what about that specific person it is so what's the word infatuating to people like that 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 he is the iconic character for that role i think anybody else could play that role and still be just as iconic but versus han solo like Han Solo is a is a different ball game. Yeah, it's a different ball game. It's okay. a different tier of yeah. character. All right, we're gonna go move on. Uh, Reese Dvorak does Reese say a hard disagree. Okay. We have got to move on. We are going to move on to Guardians of the Galaxy here. Because Reese is old. <laughs> Sorry. Here we go. Here we go. go ahead. I'm gonna tell you something. I'm Star Lord. I formed the Guardians. Met a girl, fell in love. That girl died, but then she came back. Came back a total dick. Oh, please. He left out some important information, but that is the gist of it. My sacred mission is to create the perfect society. He didn't want to make things perfect. He just hated things the way they are. I want you all to know that I am grateful to fight beside my friends. Incinerate them. searching for a family until we found each other are you ready for one last ride we'll all fly away together into the forever and beautiful sky was that you were in love with? It sounds more like her. Her? That's Do ridiculous. Do not bring me into this. Oh, <laughs> Knock it off! What? I just never noticed how black your eyes were. They were replaced by my father as a method of torture. He, he picked a pretty set. Oh, goodness. That, oh, if Guardians of the Galaxy, my word is... I mean, you can't 
get any better. I mean, James Gunn did such a great job with this whole series. And, and I'm just so impressed. I'm so happy that they're coming out with this third one. And it's going to be the last one, obviously. Um, I think, right? Am I right on that? I, I'm just, I know it's well, James yeah, Gunn's it's last. last. It's James Gunn's last little hoorah. I think it is the last of the Guardians of the Galaxies movies, but I def I think they're going to be a part of the MCU moving forward. Right. Um, but yeah, dude, Guardians of the Galaxy is fantastic. Mm -hmm. it is, you can't go wrong with it. Yeah. You really can't. Chris Pratt, just amazing. Chris Pratt's amazing. Just comes out of nowhere. Yeah, it comes out of nowhere. I mean, from well, Parks and Rec. And he was great. Yeah, yeah. People he was loved good him, that. and then he just came out, come out as a freaking awesome action actor. You know, with uh, not only this, but with some. What's the uh, uh, Amazon? Dave Batista Amazon. came out of freaking nowhere. And what's the Amazon Prime movie he's in that he was just in? Uh, terminal List. Yeah. No, it's not the Terminal. Well, that's the series, but it was. Uh, he did play in the Terminal He did list, play in. Then he played in. What's the. the Edge of Tomorrow. Yeah. Something about Tomorrow. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. With his daughter. Mm -hmm. He. Or his fan daughter. Yeah. Fantastic actor. Um, we are. I want to kind of keep our time going here. We've had to wait a little bit because of Matthew. We're not going to put any pointing any fingers but we're gonna really talk a whole lot there we're gonna keep moving on to 65 which is a movie that i saw the first time yesterday and was so impressed and was i said sent matthew a uh a text right after i watched that and said we gotta see this and he said i agreed this was what did you say matthew one of the most anticipated movies of 2023. Right, with Adam Driver here. And uh, let's take a look here um, with uh, 65. Let me share this with you guys. There's something alien out there. Location unknown. Charter 373. This is Commander Mills. My ship was hit by an undocumented asteroid. Transporting 35 passengers on a long-range exploratory mission. Send help. We've crash-landed on an uncharted celestial body. I don't know where we are. I've located one survivor. A child. The atmosphere is breathable. There's something alien out there. Guys, if that doesn't, I, I mean, this this whole thing is uh, a huge just 
combination of a multiple movies that they combine into one. I see a little Jurassic Park in this. I see a little uh, Riddick Pitch Black, if you haven't seen that movie. Uh, I see a little bit of uh, uh, Lost in Space in this. Um, but it looks so cool. It looks so good. Um, we're going to have to go see that. We're going to review that um, and let you guys know more about that um, in our sp- non-spoiler and spoiler review when that comes out. Um, Matthew, your thoughts on this movie? Dude, this uh, 65, a- Adam Driver, I will say is, I mean, he's not an underrated actor, but he, you know, in my eyes, I feel like he, he should be given more roles. Mm-hmm. Um Dude, the, his voice, the way he articulates certain things, like he's so good. Um, so I'm really excited. I know that he embodies the character pretty well, like when he goes into these movies and he gives it his all. So right. I'm really excited. Um, all I could think about was the marriage story when he was yelling at his wife. Have you, you ever With seen that? Scarlett that Johansson? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I was like thinking to myself, like that would be like one of the hardest scenes to try to get through because you, you, you like, you have to like, you have to embody that character so much in order mm-hmm. to get yourself in that mindset, to be able to yell at somebody and create emotion. And I think he does a really good job at that. Right. I think he'll, he'll kill it in this role. Um, I've got just a little thing. And I talked to you a little bit about this earlier right. is that I saw this little thing. Just want somebody's idea. Throw your throw your thoughts in the comments. Throw it out. Harry Potter. Okay. Adam Driver plays a young Snape. And they talk they go through his entire time as a Death Eater. And then how he became Dumbledore's right hand man. I think that would be a killer Snape series. You know, he does look like, like a a Snape. Um if you look, I mean, let me share this, my, my screen here. He, he's, I mean, spot on, you know, stride like for stride. The voice, the voice, all of it. Like you imagine, like I always think of Harry Potter and I'm just like, when uh, Snape's like, Mr. Potter or whatever. Mr. Potter. Let's see. Like, he would have that deep voice to be able to, to really hit that. So. I mean, we I only, like would... I mean, he looks exactly like Alan Rickman, uh, or at least they, I mean, it, it's spot on. Dude. So close. So, so close. close. That is, yeah, you can't get closer than that. I, yeah, I don't know, but we're going to clause that guys. If you haven't seen those, I'm going to put my cat down. We're going to get. Um, we're going to get into this a little bit more into the biggest series of, I think, ever to come out after this last episode of episode five. Holy smokes. I don't know. Uh, but the last of us guys get out there, watch this. Um, we're going to go over episode four and five. Uh, we didn't go over four. Uh, cause we were left at a little cliffhanger at the end and, uh, kind of wanted to kind of combine them all together into one. So I'm going to give you a little, uh, synopsis of four and five here, and then we're going to kind of go over, um, our review of it and, and yeah, so here we go. So in episode four, they're hiding out in an older bar. Joel and Ellie get to talking about how she just saved his life and it plays out a very differently from the game. But then we're getting into episode five. While attempting to evade the rebels, Joel and Ellie cross paths with cross paths. My bad, guys. With the most wanted man in Kansas City, Kathleen continues her hunt. Matthew, let me get your review of an rating on episode four and five um, on a scale of one to five. Come on, give it to me. I need to know. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to do. And you want non-spoiler? Or spoiler? Yeah, non-spoiler or right spoiler? now. We're going to non-spoiler, and then we're going to get into the spoiler. That's just a pre-spoiler warning because I'm known to say he's, some things. He's so always I'm like sorry. that, guys. I apologize. I apologize. Um, so four, uh, on a scale of one to five, I give it a 4.5, okay? Mm-hmm. In number, or excuse me, episode five, I'm giving it a, a five out of five. Or for the Infinity Bros, shout out the Infinity Bros, six out of six. Um oh, <laughs> six out of six um 
dude, four, four and five. Four by itself, it was really good, but I really needed five to answer some questions. Oh, yeah. And so I'm so glad that we waited for episode five to do this because now we can talk about both episode four and five together. Um, four, really, really good. I thought mm-hmm. there was a lot of things that take the characters to the next level that we haven't seen yet that we've been – I mean, personally, I've been waiting to see – these characters flourish into ways that, you know, everybody's hyping it to be the people who have played the video game religiously. Um, and then five, there was, I mean, <laughs> episode five, it was freaking baller. It was, Whoa. that's all I could say. It was baller. Like, Oh, I can't wait to talk about it. If you haven't seen it, go freaking check it out. I'm serious. Go uh, check it out. Matthew. I am a hundred percent on your board. I am five out of five, six out of six. This series at just blows my mind at the end of episode five i'm just standing up and clapping for this because i am just so pumped for this this whole series and like if it were to end on episode five right here i would be just just satisfied and just as excited for season two i am all yep. aboard on the last of us this is so good it it just captures your heart you care so much for the characters and you're just so involved. I mean, the last time I felt this involved was um was Breaking Bad. And I love and that and okay. that was the last time I was ever been into a series or a TV series that I was this involved with and I cared so much about the characters. And so uh 100% on board. But let's get into it. Guys, oh hang on. They got a burp, but it's not coming out. Um, guys, we're going to get into the spoilers now. So um, right now, we are going to talk a little bit spoiling. We're going to get a little spoil. Um, I just burped. Like there that nasty milk that you left? Mm-hmm. The eggnog, <laughs> man. It's, it's spoiled. Oh, the eggnog. Um, guys, so we are going to give you our spoiler warning right now. Here it comes. Uh, I'm just going to do it live because we don't have it yet. So here it comes. Spoiler, spoiler. Spoiler, spoiler. Spoiler zone. Spoiler zone. Spoiler warning. Spoiler warning. Spoiler. Get out now before you get spoiled. Uh, (laughs) okay (laughs) all right so we're gonna start episode four that was great that's great content guys if you don't think that's great content i don't know what do you think great content is um um anyways so we're getting into episode four we're gonna start with episode four where joel and ellie are on their way to montana to in search to find tommy joel's brother um matthew i there's a point when they're driving because they got Bill's truck and they're moving along yeah. and Ellie finds a little something you want to get, you want to get a little uh, <laughs> in depth here. Cause uh, I thought this part was hilarious. I loved it. And it was, it showed to me that Ellie is just a curious mind as well as that. She's wanting to goof around and kind of have a relationship with Joel. Oh man, dude, she freaking finds a duty magazine. A little porn. She freaking finds a duty magazine. I think it's a. I think it was a. I don't know if it was a guys magazine or it had a girls to be. magazine. It had to be. But they made a joke. They made a joke that the pages were stuck together, and <laughs> Joel was like, "Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Joel had to give the birds and the bees." Yeah. Yeah. Uh. You don't want to. But it it does like that that first little like five minutes or so. Mm-hmm. Um you really get to see how they're starting to get to know each other. They're getting comfortable with each other. They're taking on the role of like a, a father figure to a daughter figure. So um, although unnecessary, I thought it was hilarious. I thought it was funny. Um, And just, it's okay to make jokes like that. I think it's cool. I think it's funny. Hey, Yeah. Um, You know what I mean? So I'm glad that they put it in. And what I'm really glad about, because it's HBO and they basically have full reigns to do whatever they want, I'm glad that they didn't show anything. I am am proud that they are. I'm happy. I mean, compared to when they were with uh, Bill and Frank to now, man, I'm I'm happy about that. That's a great thing, and I'm so happy. Um, Okay, we're going to move on. 
I'm sorry, Matthew. We're just going to keep kind of pull plugging away here. Okay. We're yeah. Bill and Ellie now have camped out in the middle of nowhere. Um, and Ellie finds a joke book and she starts sharing. This is just so good that with the characters, because previously there's not a whole lot of interaction with Joel and Ellie. I, I should say there's been a lot of cold shoulders with Joel and Ellie where they yeah. don't seem to have that type of relationship until now where Ellie's trying to break down Joel's walls and she's really trying with this joke book and, uh, and trying these different jokes with Joel to see how he would react. And each time you, you kind of see a shot where Joel's has his back to Ellie and he, you kind of like Joel, Show us, like, show us some type of emotion here that it, you think this is yeah. funny, and I thought that was so great, um, especially at the end when, uh, at, at the end, we actually Ellie starts sharing a joke and they both start laughing, and that was so satisfying. I mean, what what yeah. was your? I mean, how did you feel about that, Matt? It's like I said, this whole episode, this episode in particular, really took these two characters. And expanded upon the characters together right. at the same time. Um, I think there's a lot of lessons and a lot of different, like, like the first three episodes were a lot of growing pains. Like we're just getting to know these characters. We're just seeing how like Joel is going to take her under her wings, and the, and that's the idea that we have. If you go into it knowing nothing, right? Like you think, oh, it's just him and Ellie, right? Like he's got to take her under his wings. He's got to protect her. He's got to do all these things to save her. And we haven't gotten that much up until this episode where we're noticing like, hey, he's taken and stepping up, right? And, and making an active role in this girl's life. And I think it's, I think it's beautiful. I think it's awesome. Because it's like, it, the first three episodes failed to do that. Yeah. Okay. It failed to do that. But this episode made up for it, right? And and it, it really, it, we were at like a three out of ten for the first three episodes. Now we're at like a seven. They're not like perfect, but they're they're like we made a big jump. What? Just this one episode, personally, on their relationship, their communication. The other episodes really didn't bring us that. And I think that's what we needed is kind of a, a, a couple episodes to build up yeah. and then just hit us with it. To build up the relationship like kind of thing. And But I think they did yeah. that intentionally because you want to care. So then you actually want to care for that. You want to see that. And they do that. I think they did that intentionally. I don't think it's something that they are like, uh, let's just wait on it. I think they did that intentionally. Well, and I, bad. Just, I, just, just, you know, dangle the little. Yeah, this pool. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> Here's a treat. Here's a treat. Yeah. And and so I think it's, it's great. You know, this is one of the things though I think there's a little um what do you call it? imagery, imagery here between or uh No, imagery is the word. Yeah, imagery between imagery is the word. I think it is uh, imagery between their first interaction because now you're seeing them laying for the night and Joel is staying up you know, he's, he's a red alert. He is like, okay, I need to protect Ellie. This is, this is who I need to protect. And this is my goal and everything. And doesn't care about anything else. It seems like not even Ellie that his goal nope. that is to protect Ellie. And he doesn't even care necessarily about Ellie. And then we move nope. on and we'll talk a little bit about what's in that middle part. But then at the end of this episode, we see that when Ellie brings up jokes again and they have these laughs, that Joel lets down his guard basically and and falls asleep. And, and that in that term is that that's kind of the way you're looking at it is that he falls asleep and he lets down his guard as well as you learn that Joel's left ear is is deaf. No, his, his right, right ear. ear. His right ear. My bad. His yep. right ear is deaf. So he falls asleep on his right ear, but then it cuts and then goes blank. And then it, you wake up to him being on, on his, his left. left. And then you, as soon as that's happened, 
they're uh, they get the twist. They got the twist. They got the uh, they they're held to gunpoint there at the end of episode can four. I, Go ahead. Can I just talk about? Oh, sorry. Um, I wanted to talk about or, or bring up the idea of the the gas tank. Wasn't that freaking cool? How he was siphoning out gas, dude. Like it makes me think personally. I mean, he's been doing this for a long time. It's been what twenty years or something like that, but. This might be the first time he's ever had a car in his old time. That's why he was looking for a battery. I don't know. Maybe, Maybe. that's the idea that I Yeah, I, I, I get it. I get it. Yeah. Him. It it personally, I was just thinking to myself, what did this guy do before the apocalypse or whatever it is? Like you said, if you asked me, hey Matt, can you siphon out gas from a vehicle? I'd be like, I don't know what the frick I'd be doing. <laughs> You know, like I have no clue. It, so it makes me think that when he was younger, like he probably lived a pretty crazy life. That's that was just my one off thought. Like when I was thinking about that, I was like, man, how did he learn how to do that? Like who taught him how to do that? Dude, I, well, from episode one, it looks like he's just a handyman and that's what he is. But I've seen my grandpa do that in real life. And uh, really? yeah, and that was the craziest thing as a kid to see your grandpa suck up gasoline and suck it in it was like what what he was doing he was sucking it with another hose where he could like one hose he was just it was his air his air hose and the other hose was his gas hose and basically he was just sucking it up just sucking up air so his gas hose with the pressure of yeah. the air went Science. We don't know. Forget science. <laughs> but my <laughs> grandpa, but my grandpa <laughs> did it with just one hose, and he just like sucked in the gasoline into his mouth. I'm like, grandpa, like thinking about that. I was like, grandpa, you're gonna die soon now. Uh, but uh, man, that was rest in peace. <laughs> no, he's not dead. But uh... oh, sorry. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> what? It's so those parts just got me so good and it was just like this is so good it wasn't like like fantastically good until episode five i think episode five was the best episode Baller. by far um then we're gonna get to that but then um joel and ellie get it to kansas city um kind of had some roadblocks Oh gosh, had some roadblocks to get them that uh, they had to get past, but they they made it through and they got to Kansas City and they are met with a guy that is ha asking for help on the street. Um, Joel, well, Ellie wants to help him, but Joel knows exactly what's going on, um, and he makes a run for it and hits it in reverse and gets the H E double hockey sticks out of there, but. He is met with some resistance from a couple of guys, three guys, in fact, with some gunfire and a brick to the windshield. And in this is kind of where we get to see Joel a little bit more action. You get to kind of see the, the bad side of Joel here. Um, Matthew, what was your kind of initial thoughts of the bad side of Joel here? Dude, so... This is what I've been waiting for since episode one. I do you know how many times people have told me that Joel is this? He's this guy. He's this dangerous, very well off man with a weapon. He's very dangerous. He's we hadn't seen anything like that up until this point, right? Like mm -hmm. the, we see him go and punch the police officer in the first episode, right? But that's it. Other than that, he hasn't really done much. So for him to be literally on a 3v1 or a 4v1, whatever it was, and him coming out on top, dude, it, it was it was awesome. It wasn't quite as much as I would like. I wanted to see him go off, right? In episode five, we're going to talk about episode five. He goes off. Yep. Number episode four, he didn't really go off, but like you realize. This guy's got a past oh, <laughs> and mm -hmm. this is the first part where you're like, this guy has done some crazy stuff and I'm, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. And I did think, and maybe I'm jumping ahead of here just a little bit, but when Ellie finally got her shot, 
Got her shot to shoot the guy. I told you. Hey, hang on, hang on, hang on. Before we get up, I freaking told you guys. I called this so many weeks ago that this was going to happen. I didn't know it was going to be this episode. I thought it was going to be later, but man, did I call it. I freaking told you guys so freaking good. I'll freaking give it to you. I'll freaking give it to you. All right, go ahead. Yeah. Um, But then Ellie finally gets her shot to to save Joel and use the gun. That was kind of like, in my opinion, like the turning point for Ellie for us to see, right? Because after that, that, like you realize Joel's got a past. And then moments later, we find out, oh, shoot, Ellie's killed somebody before, yeah. right? Like, she reveals, like, she's killed somebody. And it that, like, those two things let me know, like, hey, there's way more depth to these characters than just going to Montana or Wisconsin or yeah. Wyoming, wherever they're going, to save Tommy, right? There's more to it than her being the cure or whatever, the cure. I, I, I don't know what that means yet. Oh, yeah. But... There's more to these characters than yeah. than what's at the surface so far. And so, yeah, I really like that scene. So good. So good. Freaking, I, oh, my gosh. Kathleen was a bisquick. Bisquick was, in the biz, business. Dude, dude okay. So was, oh. I, there's a lot of things. I, there's so many questions I have for you, Matt. And there's – especially in episode five, I think there's – with this whole interaction with Joel and Ellie. And so I want to get to episode Yeah, five. let's get to this episode five. Yes, we meet right. let, let's, let's, well, let's wrap let's Yeah, wrap, we're, we're gonna wrap up episode five. four here. So we meet Kathleen and Kathleen is this uh, leader of this group. It seems like they had just uh finished Fedra and uh well at least they want to and they're looking for a guy by the name of Henry and it seems very significant to Kathleen. And uh, and then uh, Ellie and Joel talk about innocent people and who if Joel's killed innocent people before to survive and that's kind of the whole thing. And then the, it ends with Joel or Ellie's telling the joke, and then Joel and Ellie being held at gunpoint by two uh, non people uh, or people we have no people no idea who they are. That will bring us into episode five. Let's get into into episode five, the biggest one. I love this episode, and so did you. We already know that. Um, it starts off by showing that this this group of uh, people that uh, Kathleen was a part of, we don't necessarily know what group of people they are. They're just some resistance. They, we don't know if they're the fireflies or not. They call them rats. Well, they call them the rats or something? No, they don't call They call the people that were... Um, they're the rats. No, the the people that Kathleen's a part of. Oh no, no, I'm talking about the ones that she. Yeah, so right? yeah, no, so Henry. yeah, you're you're going a little too far, but uh, then we're kind of being introduced to Henry and Sam, and that they're being ah, my cat, um, being uh, fleeing from Fedra or from this not Fedra, I mean from this uh, mercenary group um, that had just defeated Fedra. Um, Matt, what are your first thoughts on uh, Henry and Sam? Dude, can we talk about like the backstory a little bit? Can we? I mean, yeah, that? yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. I think first things first. The guy who plays Henry Lamar, his name's Lamar Jackson. That guy's a dude. He was a dude. No, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Are you Lamar Jackson? Are you sure about that? Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I, Cause that seems. I, are you serious? Are you serious? Let me just double check. Cause I'm gonna double check. You know what? You were. I think you're right. I think you're right. Yep. Yep. Lamar John. No, Lamar Johnson. Oh, gotcha. That's my fault. No, I, Lamar Johnson. I was gonna say. I was like, that's that's the football player. Uh, up? No, no, yeah. So Lamar Johnson, the guy who plays Henry, yeah, yeah. this guy is a baller. They need to get him in in like MCU titles, like throughout this entire like I could see him being personally, and this is just me talking about the guy who plays the character, Static Shock. He could play Static Shock. I think he could. I think he could. That was the first thing I thought about. Um, just saying, because I think he's young enough. He's, you know, he's got the voice. He he could he could be a static shock for years to come. 
That's just my personal opinion. Hmm. Side note. Okay. Sorry. That's a little, a little, maybe a hot take. I don't know. But that's my personal opinion. That's the first thing I thought. Okay. We need to get him into MCU. He killed it this entire series. Yeah. Um, Sam, the younger brother, killed it as well this mm. entire episode. Um, I really love the the fact that in this episode, we start off with Henry and Sam, like, pointing a gun at uh, Joel and Ellie. Joel and, Ellie. Yep. and then they bring it to the backstory, and they show us, like, where they came from. What they've done, I hit my mic. I know yeah. you're that. <laughs> I hate that, but you know that. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> so they do a backstory on it, and I think this backstory was so good. I think it was so good because it's like you're showing a brother and a like a brother and an, a, a young kid and his older brother, and his older brother is the protector yeah. of this kid. Similar vibes as to Joel and, and Ellie, but just a different stance, if you will. Right. So it was really awesome that they kind of explored those two, the journey that they've taken, what they do, like the 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 steps that they take when they leave the buildings. Mm-hmm. Like it, it's so meticulous. Like every plan that they do is like, hey, step by step, this is what we're gonna look at. Right. Like. They didn't even go outside. They looked out the window and, and like stood up on a table right. before they went out. And I think all of that was like really, really cool to see. Cause it's like, for me, I'm just like, why not just like, you got a gun, I'm sure go run somewhere. Like you guys are probably fast enough. Like, but you see how the methodology or how wanted these guys are by the steps they have to take um, and the places that they have to hide. Man. Like, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, but it also shows like not Fedra, but whoever this mercenary group is, they're they're the real like they they were the real deal at the time. Like they were dangerous people. Yeah. And they would kill anybody. What well, not like this this is the thing like, that like it's the scene where they were pulling the dead body with all the knives stabbed into the body. I mean, that was like, that's, that's brutal. I mean this is the thing. I was just getting done with watching uh, Hunger Games, actually. And the premise of Hunger Games is that they started, you know, this government that took over and they and they have these people do the games uh, for the districts that had rebelled against them. And then the districts rebel against the government again. And then to get back at the government, they're making them redo it all over again. And so it's just this eternal circle that's going to happen. And that's kind of what's happening here. And I see that there. And it's just like, someone's got to forgive. And you see that because uh, Kathleen is, then you see her in this uh, room where she grew up, where uh, you find out why Kathleen is hunting Henry down because he had basically ratted her brother out, who was the leader of this mercenary group and then they ended up executing him or killing him. I don't necessarily know if whatever happened, but the reason why yeah, they didn't really go that backstory. Yeah, too they didn't too far into the backstory. But the reason why he ratted on him is to save his brother because there was this medicine that his brother had leukemia, and there was this medicine that was working for him, and there wasn't enough of it. And in order to get more of it, he needed to. Well, Federo was giving out if you ratted you would get things from Federal like supplies or anything like that. And that's what happened with Henry where he got supplies or the medicine to save his brother, which ended up saving his brother. But then obviously Kathleen didn't like that. And um, there were, she was in the apartment or the room where her and her brother grew up and she was there when her brother was dying and he was telling his sister to forgive him. Because I, I think that was the huge thing is that she was coming after everybody. I would curious to see what would have happened if her brother would have survived and he would have taken over because it seems like her brother was more logical and more reasonable because in history, as we see that, I think he would have been more of, we have to set the boundaries here, put people to a fair trial where Kathleen, you don't see her actually putting him, anybody. It's very emotional. It, yeah. <laughs> God, get out of here. Um, and so Henry. Sounds like a, yeah. like a freaking woman. Yeah. <laughs> freaking bad woman. <laughs> <laughs> You're the worst. 
Uh, so then, <laughs> I'm trying to get through this. Kathleen, I mean, Henry and Sam now are, have a Joel and Elliot at gunpoint, but they say, listen, we want to work with you. We saw you guys take down those three bad boys mercenaries, and you guys are a bunch of bad boys, and we need some bad boys on our side right now. Come on now. And so they get Joel and Ellie to agree to help them out by protecting them, basically, from any clickers or any runners. Um, so this is where... I, I don't know. This is, I don't think, do you think Henry is a bad guy in this? I think, uh, see, that's the, that's the problem with the villain idea is like, it depends on what side you're on, right? Like on what's her name side on Kathleen's side, mm-hmm. she's the good guy. Right. But on yeah, Henry's side, he's the good guy. Right, because it's the values that you're that you're built on trying to do certain things for. Yeah, but all in all, I think overall, overall, I think he's a good guy. Yeah, I think if the twist at the end or the the situation that happened at the end doesn't happen, that the story will continue and that there'll be a good partnership. I think that's what would have happened. Yeah. So yes, but I do think. I mean you rat somebody out like and you did it for a good cause it's it's difficult yeah it's a very difficult situation to put yourself in because you not only are you putting your brother in in jeopardy but you're also like like you have to save him right so you're trying to save him but by saving him you are now putting him in jeopardy yeah so it's a it's a a hard situation to anyone you don't want anybody in. And if anyone was in it, I see why he did what he did. Right. You And I see the struggle that he had. You to would understand with. a little so, bit about yeah. why he chose to rat on Kathleen's brother and then kill off Kath or basically kill Kathleen's brother to save his own brother. Um, which by the way, yeah. when I, that whole thing was happening, I totally thought Sam was Henry's son it, through the whole thing. But, that has nothing. I don't know. Okay. Now we're going to get into something. This is one question that came to my mind during the battle scene. So Henry and Sam are leaving and they are, they made it through the tunnels because Henry and Sam gave them the shortcut through the hunt. Talk about the tunnels. You want to talk about the tunnels? I want to talk about the tunnels. Okay. Give me the, I didn't because... really have a whole lot on the tunnels. Why don't you tell me what you want to say about so, the tunnels? So basically the plan was, was, the easiest plan or the ideal plan would be like, as any person, just walk down the street, hide, wait for your best opportunity to not get caught. Yep. They couldn't do that because every corner was covered from this mercenary group. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> and so the only way they were ever going to be able to get out of the city of uh, Kansas City would be to go through these service tunnels where they do like electrical plumbing and stuff like that. Yep. Um, But the caveat was that three years or two or three years prior, um, there were thousands and thousands of clickers and infected people down there. And so Henry was telling him, well, (laughs) I have a route. It, It, Three years ago, some guy said that there was stuff in there and that they cleared it out, but we don't know. It's three years ago. So they took the shot. They took the chance. They went down there. Um, and down there, it looked like there was actually people who lived down there. Like there was people who spent a lot of time there. They they got to their, their sort of final destination, if you will, their midpoint destination, Um, And there was crayons. There was like, it was basically a whole toy room. Like you would see at like church for the kids. Um, And then there was also a goalpost. This was a very pivotal point because this is where Joel and Henry really start to get like come together. Right. Like they start talking about things. They start getting to know each other. You see that Joe, uh, Ellie and, Sam are really starting to get close, like really, really close. Um, but when, so there was, there was one little thing though, that yeah, really 
made me like kind of know or help me foreshadow the ending was that the comic that was there. Mm -hmm. And in the comic, there was, I forget what he was, what the saying was. It was like endure and survive. Endure or survive or something and, like that. Endure um, and survive. That's the that was the name of the episode. Survive. Episode. But you look at the comic and it's a very dark comic. So so when I was looking at that and it said endure and survive, I personally was like, dude, so there's gonna be a twist at the end here because like I don't know, it just was like a symbolic thing for like who would leave like who what kid would leave that? Yeah. Like the I don't know. And maybe I'm stretching a little bit and I'm okay with saying that I'm stretching a little bit, but I personally think that when they said endure and survive is that that was at the end, something bad's going to happen personally. And so that get, that got us out. Once we got to that point, now we're out of the tunnel. Yeah. It's, and that's where, that's, that's where, where now, juice, yeah. Now this is where the juice comes in. The They're juice. now moving. They think they are scot-free. They made it home free. We're, we're out. We're out of Kansas City. The the mercenary people can't hurt us anymore, and they then get shot down by a sniper. They're, no one got shot down, but they're getting shot at um, by a sniper. And in this scene, I had a question that I I started kind of seeing more of Ellie and Joel's relationship turn a little bit. Because most of this time, it's been mostly Joel and Ellie relationship based off of his, him and his daughter. But here, where I think I saw more of Ellie as becoming Tess. Um, I, I want to see, like, do you, or ask you, do you think that this Joel and Ellie are turning more into a Joel and Tess kind of relationship or a Joel and his daughter relationship? Oh man, that's a really good question. Cuz it's cuz I can see where you're coming from cuz now now they've got to fight together type thing. Um they've got to fight together, but I also uh, it's a yes and no, man. Like I think there's going to be a lot of attributes that that we see in Ellie that are coming from Tess and in the imagery that they created, but you could also tell like Joel's getting in that mindset. Like when they get behind the car and they're getting shot at, you could tell his mindset's starting to change. And that change and that mindset is what him and Ellie or excuse, uh, no, you're, Pedro Pascal yeah. and Tess had when they were, yeah. you know, their whole backstory, right? There's a lot of backstory that we don't know about Joel that I think, Hey, this is going to, we're starting to flip the switch here. Hmm. Like there's a switch here. Like, the other episode, episode four, where we saw him, you know, kill three or four guys. For me, I was like, "This is BA," but yeah. we're about to turn on the switch, <laughs> and that switch was protecting and fighting with Ellie and protecting the other people. No, okay, so I want to talk so about. Yes, no. Yeah, I agree. I think there's a little bit of Ellie and a little bit of Tess that he's now viewing Ellie as. But there's a part I want to kind of go back to episode four because. Episode four and five, I think, go hand in hand with each other. And we couldn't do four and five together, I think, without having one full episode. Because you have to go back to episode four when Ellie is basically forced to shoot this guy that's killing Joel and her first kill. And in there, she basically loses her innocence. And But that, I think, is where Joel starts to respect Ellie more as a Tess then he he started seeing her more as a test and started trusting her more because he not only didn't took the gun away but he gave it back to her and taught her how to shoot and uh which was interesting and and you know holding the gun and and what to do and also to put it in your bag so you there's still trust but there's still a little distrust there that uh he has and uh but you kind of see their minds work together because he, here they get out. They're gunned down by a sniper. J Joel basically kind of flanks the sniper and then gets in there and kills the sniper guy. But then when that happened, the mercenaries were already on their way and uh, basically were about to kill Henry and get captured Henry and all of them. 
And at this point, I'm like, how in the world are Henry and, and all Sam and Joel and Ta- Ellie going to get out of this? I, I mean, my my mind was like, what is going to happen? gonna happen i was literally like they're gonna die yeah i was like they're gonna freaking die what, That's what, I what in the world is gonna take for them to get out of this but then you start to kind of bring back the ground starts to sink in there was like a sinkhole and uh we actually go back to episode four and there was a part where kathleen and her henchmen which by the way fun fact the henchmen played the brother in the video game. He was the voice actor for the brother in, yep. in the, in the video game, but they had found this room and you saw the floor kind of bouncing up and down. And so they kind of put that in the back of their head. They said, forget about it. We're going to keep looking for Henry. That's priority number one. Um, but this is where we get a lot of action. We get it all, man. It was it intense. Cause the, the, oh. the boys came out. The boys came out tonight, and uh, oh man, the uh, the clickers—they're not clickers, they're clickers. They're they're runners, I believe, is what they're called. And they came out, and uh, basically, it was a a, a fire fire uh, frenzy, if you will. Fire freaking firefight! Firefight, man! And uh, yeah, so this is where I think. Joel and Ellie became started becoming more on the same page because they're pinned down. They don't know where to what to do. Uh, Henry and Sam, had, are running everywhere. yeah, everyone's running everywhere. But then Joel is sees Ellie and he and Ellie get on the same page. Ellie books it for a car that she sees the window wide open. Oh gosh, my cat's on the whatever. Um, Joel books it for the. Uh, Oh no, not Joel. Ellie books it for the the car that she sees with the window open, and Joel knows exactly what to do, and he starts, you know, protecting her as he usually does. Um, man, I think this is the most bad, like the ba scene of Joel. Right. This entire scene. I, I, if you like, as I, as it's happening, like, oh, it's it's so, so good. This is what she's like diving I, I, in. Let me say this. Oh. Let me say it. I think the Joel in the video game is a lot more BA than the Joel in the in the TV series. If you watch the video game oh, so far, uh, so far for sure. I think still Joel right now is still kind of a, you know, BA, but not as BA as the guy in the video game. Um so yeah, I think he's total BA, but how much ammo does Joel have? Like the guy kept, I don't. Know. The guy kept shooting, uh, and he just kept shooting and shooting with no repercussion, repercussion of ammo, ammunition. And the guy kept going. So I, I was just very. Maybe confused. he's just so good. All right, he was so good yeah. that he could reload it really quick. But dude, like I was jumping out of my seat mm-hmm. every t- like there, dude, Ellie. Was d- bobbing and weaving on people, mm-hmm. and as she was getting grabbed, this is he literally uh, would just go. <laughs> oh, and then when okay, and then when his his uh, his gun is jammed, you're uh, like, ah, come on! Uh, you're like, you're uh, you're so in it, like, and then it's just like, oh my word! And they're just taking you on this crazy roller coaster, and you're just like moving and twisting and you're like your whole body is just i it's i just couldn't get over how amazing this part is but they get away they get past this all and we see them uh i mean ellie had to go and save henry and sam as they were underneath a a car and uh my my cat's ruining just all up in my my desk and I can't move my mouse, but that's okay. I'm going to just take this home right now, baby. Um, and they get away clean and it seems like they, they got, you know, fresh, you know, they get a break. They can breathe. Finally, they can rest and they make it to like this hotel room. And here is where it kind of, it gets bad. Um, this is the sad part a little bit, um, where we find, Ellie yeah. and, and Sam in the same room, and they were told to go to bed. Can we pause this for a second okay, for ahead. just one moment? Give it to me. Because we kind of skipped over it. Okay. 
how BA was the big. Oh yeah. Oh my bad, dude. Man. What am I doing? Oh my. What are you doing? What am I doing? Like we did. We missed the best part. He freaking came in and ripped the guy's head off. Dude, I but, at that moment, like I'm thinking to myself, this is a civil like. We think of these zombies as like zombies, random, not thinking, not. Do, you know what I mean? Like the, their brain, their brain dead. Mm-hmm. At that moment, when that when that thing, I don't even know what it's called, comes out of the ground, I'm thinking to myself, this is a community. Oh yeah, the, like they're playing together, dude. Oh, so so they're like, they're called bloaters. D you- bloaters. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're yeah, called they bloaters. I, I completely. I don't know why I forgot. I'm so sorry about this, Matthew. Oh my! Heavens. I am so sorry. This is my fault. As your host, I failed. But let me, let me finish my point before you jump to the next. No, thing. I I was gonna add when they when he comes out when he comes out, I realize that this, like this is much more dangerous than I ever thought it was. Mm-hmm. Like this is their leader. Like that's that's a leader. That's the leader of that whatever community of how many. Yep clickers or zombies or whatever and at that moment i'm just my sum my stomach sunk in i had butterflies oh, yeah. i'm just thinking to myself what else is out there like what yeah like, what, what like, else the, yeah the humans are fighting over the humans but we're not they're not worried about there's like this is actually like smart this is people this is like living beings underneath the ground or whatever in this scene yeah. Like th- these aren't people to mess with. These aren't things to mess no, with. No, not at all. And do you think so? Do you think, think we're gonna be cool. able to? See, you think we're gonna be seeing bloaters in the future? You think we're gonna be dealing with that, or at least Joel and Ellie be. gonna be dealing with that? Because they seem to be like they're these big guys and just fat guys, but they seem to be bulletproof as well. And. Yeah. So, like, what is it going to take to kill these things, or what is it going to take to take these guys down, so that I, I, I mean, just run away? Basically, is all the only answer they have right now. I have no idea. See, here's the here's the hard part with this show is that there's two routes you can go. Right, you could go the route where it's all internal battle between communities of humans. Yeah. Right. Or you have an external and internal battle. Oh, there's really three. Internal and external at the same time, right? Like you're actually having to, like, you, you have a, a battle between humans and the zombies at the same time. Right. Kind of like Walking Dead style. Or you seclude one or the other. And that's where I don't know the direction of the show moving forward is like, they could take it where it's like, they joined this community and now they've got to figure out a way to kill all of these clickers and whatever, or you stick with, Hey, this is a community that hates Joel. What? You're pounded on the thing and I can hear it with you. I haven't found it. Uh, or not, I you're it. you're, put you're putting head. your hands down or something like that. I can hear oh. that. It's okay. It's okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. sorry. It's just, I can, I'll keep my hands up. My mic. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so the, I think that's the internal battle that they, that they're going to have to go like last of us has multiple different options that they can go. Yeah. And I think that's crazy to think. Cause I didn't, the first two episodes, like episode two, when Tess died, mm-hmm. like, yeah, we see the severity of these, these clickers and, and these, what are they called? Bloaters. Mm-hmm. But we don't really see, we don't really see the effectiveness until this episode. And you're like, holy right. crap, we've got problems with, with us internally in the communities. Now we've got a, another problem to deal with. No, so, 100%. I, I think you, we haven't seen the full wrath, really, of the clickers, the runners, and the bloaters. Or, I mean, All we've seen is the result right. of it. We, basically, we've seen tests kind of deal with them, but it wasn't really like super violent. It wasn't really anything that was, they were like coming after tests or anything, but Tess was able to take them down with a big, big explosion. All right. So anyways, explosion. we're going to move on. I love the bloaters. It was great. Um, but we're left with Joel, Ellie's Henry and Sam finding themselves some shelter and finally having 
a, bre- a fr- breath of fresh air. And uh, they, a breath of fresh air. And they are now told to go to bed. Matthew, could you go to bed after that epic battle? No. Yeah, I no. Way. I was like, there's no way I would be able to go to bed. I'd be scared out of my mind. I'd be like, I I would keep walking. Yeah. It's like find a vehicle, keep driving. What are we doing laying down right now? I need to go. We need to get out of here. Let's keep going. I need to get to the Montana. Give me the next country. Um, but uh <laughs> they are told to go to bed uh sam and ellie and we find out that sam was bitten which is so sad because i loved sam he was such a lovable character and um we see that ellie is not as afraid she she obviously is not afraid to really at all about this whole fungus disease um she tries the blood transfusion by cutting her own hand and then basically putting it on his wound which was bitten Matthew, quick question do you think ellie is the cure obviously because now that she kind of you've seen this transfusion kind of supposedly she's the cure for this is she Dude, uh, it, it made me question, right? Because the twist is that. Well, I'm not gonna jump into the twist. Well, I will just do it. Bit, just do it. It'll go, make sense go. my point. So she goes and cuts her hand open, and she says, "My blood is um, a cure, medicine, or right. whatever for this thing." And so she rubs the blood on the on the wound. And so it, it came of one of two things when I came up to it is this is a test run. This is a guinea pig or well, three things. She's good. He's going to give, she's going to give her, give him AIDS. That's <laughs> thing. I was like, that's a great way to give somebody AIDS, like a horrible way. Uh, <laughs> That, that really was the first thing I thought about. Um, for, and then for the, for yeah, the yeah. TV series, it's how they cure AIDS. Yes. Yes. <laughs> this is the cure to AIDS. <laughs> okay. Go. Um, so, so one of two things that popped up is that this is a guinea pig. This is the first time she's ever tried this thing. Mm-hmm. Or she's cured somebody before. That's what I was thinking about. Because mm. I was like, okay. She feels very confident that her blood is a cure. She must have done this before, or she's just making a guess. Right. And so going into it, I was like, oh, sweet. Like, she's got to be the cure. She's got to be like, this has to work. She's got it. She's done this before. Right. Right. Like, that's one of the two options that I could think of. And then it comes out that it didn't, it didn't actually work. He he didn't he didn't actually get saved from it, mm-hmm. and so then it puts a whole nother twist and brain like a doubt in my mind. I'm like, maybe she's not. Maybe this is like a one off. Like she was a one off scenario. Mm-hmm. But the problem with that thought that thought process is that how do you continue the story moving right. forward? You know, like yeah, I. I don't know. Yeah. That's that's my thought process. I was very I was very upset that they killed off Sam. It was the actor did a the actor kid yeah. did a great job. This but so. this is where we get into the, like where I was just blown away by this episode. It was the very last moments and basically Sam well Ellie doesn't know Sam or Ellie promises Sam that she will stay awake with him. But then you find that Ellie fell asleep. She broke her promise. She then sees Sam sitting at the side of the bed, turned away from her. He obviously, she obviously puts her hand on the shoulder, and then you find out that Sam's affected. They then come outside, and Joel and Henry wake up, and Joel reaches for his gun right away, but Henry beats him to it and holds Joel basically to gunpoint while. Ellie and Sam are trying to 
well, Ellie's trying to save herself from Sam biting her. And out of instinct, Henry shoots his own brother to save Ellie. And he was just as surprised as anyone in that room. And my word, the acting, the just blew my mind. Like oh. you could just see in head, like Lamar Johnson's face. I mean, the actor did so great in this mo mo moment because it's just, you felt it really just pouring out into him and just like, what have I done? I, I, I didn't even mean to do this. And it somehow I, I did it. It's just kind of like what Paul talks about. This is like, I do what I do not want to do. And he's just like, what the heck? No. And oh, man, I mean, did you, were you feeling the same way? Like the first things first, I echo 1000%. This whole scene was this five minutes. You show the depth of oh, these yes. actors and you're just like blown oh, away. Oh my gosh. Like that's why I think, that's why I think Lamar Johnson He's got to be fit for another role moving got forward to. with like some big – Got like, to. You have to. He's got the depth. He has the ability to really dive into mm -hmm. the emotions. And Pedro Pascal, another freaking beautiful hey, portrayal. Hey, let's, uh, let's give it a, a, a clapping hand here, guys. Let's give it a – My word. This is great. That was – Those two – the, the one thing I love about – Pedro Pascal is is the way he and this is I, I really like this about actors is how they use their voice mm. and their tonality. He is in a way he can change the way he talks and the way he does things very yeah. very quickly, and you can hear and feel he knows what what Henry's about to do to himself, mm -hmm. and he's trying to sympathize with him. He's trying to yeah. level with him. He's trying to oh. shift his mindset. And, and the fact that he like he was inches away, inches away from grabbing that gun is like it, it's heart wrenching. It's devastating mm -hmm. because you like we fell in love with these this character, right. Henry, and we fell in love with this character, Sam. And just to have him gone within an episode. Oh. But the way they went out, the way he acted, the way they they ended it, I'm okay with it. Yeah. I'm okay with it. I'm pissed. I wish they would continue. But the portrayal, the way they did it, I'm okay. I mean, just chef kiss right there. And I am satisfied. I wish we had more of them, but the way they went out, 100%, I can't get mad at them. It was perfect. It was just like, yep. this is great. And I mean, obviously you didn't want to see him go. And at the end, Henry had took his own life with the, the gun. And um, then they ended up, you know, burying them, which was, you know, a sign that they did care for him and they did respect him in some yep. ways. Um, my final question now for you, Matthew, is this. How do you think Henry's and Sam's death is going to affect Joel and Ellie's? Now, wait, wait. Is this going to be their demise? Do you think that because we've already shown the similarities between Henry and Sam and Joel and Ellie, are there these two going to be basically their demise of they're both going to die by someone's going to get bitten and then the other one going to kill themselves because they can't with the pain that they have to go through with killing the other person well no I don't think that's going to happen um, based off of that I don't think it'll be I don't think it's foreshadowing but what I do think this does for Joel and Ellie is that their attachment to people moving forward isn't going to be like it's going to take a long time yeah. for them to be attached to somebody. I think they're not going to rush into right. getting to know people. I think they're not going to get into a community um, right away. I think they're, yeah, this is a morning thing. Like th this was these, this last episode, although it was like 50 minutes, right? There was a lot of relationship building mm -hmm. between these two. 
and a lot of similarities and a lot of things they had to go through in order to get out alive. And I just think moving forward, the way Joel is, the way, the, the way, gosh, it's just, it's so hard because I, I just think the way Joel is, the way he's already perceived himself, he's given some, and then that was taken away from him that he's just going to keep his cards close to yeah. his chest. What? If that makes yeah, sense. I think too is just that they've like all the people they've loved so far have died. And so it's going I think yep. when they get to Tommy cuz we already saw that in the the preview for the next episode that they get to Tommy, they find Tommy. Oh, I didn't see oh. that. Ah, uh, you jackbag. Oof. Oopsies. I hey, spoiler alert. I we said it, dude. We freaking spoiler said it. Alert. Um and Great. so okay. um it's going to be interesting to see how they interact as well. It, in the preview you kind of see a little bit. I I'm not going to spoil it for that because nobody has seen it and or if you haven't seen it, I suggest not seeing it if you want to kind of be a surprise. This is what I don't like about trailers is that they always give away everything about the movie. And uh it's it's why I didn't watch the new. Well, anyways, we're, I'm getting off track, but it's not why I didn't get watch the new Spider Man trailer or not the new like when Spider Man uh, in uh, no, no way, way home. home I didn't watch any of the trailers because I didn't want anything to be spoiled for me. But obviously, things did get spoiled for me. Um, but yeah, so I I think it's going because and Ellie feels somewhat responsible because she promised him that she would stay up with him and she broke that promise. And so now it's for her. She has to get over that. She basically killed an innocent person. Um, and she feels at fault for that death. Um, and so it's going to be interesting what they're going to do now when Joel meets up with his brother and then where they're going to go with that. I'm I'm just curious yeah. what where what could happen next? Serious, I like seriously. But HBO, you better do a good let's job. Let's go HBO though. I I'm so yeah, pumped. I mean, we trust you. Yeah. We trust you. Okay, guys, just don't pull. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that guys, that as episode four and five. <laughs> that was a really really long, but it was so good. You guys got to go see it. Um, HBO has just done themselves a great series here and i suggest you guys go check it out um that's going to be it for our among us but we have one more segment that we have just started last last of us, last of us. or the last of us not the among us my bad I, my son is really into that my bad <laughs> uh we're going into our new segment we call weekly hall and i wish i had a uh media something like that but uh, i don't um we're gonna get you something like that but matthew and i we do something called the weekly hall where we purchase a lot of cool things and we want to kind of show you guys and as well as we want to hear from you guys what some of the weekly hauls you got we use facebook marketplace most of the time but if you use something else um like uh goodwill or a nice thrift store ebay, eBay anything Amazon. well matthew you use all those stuff too um we want to hear about from you guys and what you guys got or found and uh, some cool finds. Um, but Matthew got a really cool find. Uh, he sh was showing me today. Um, Matthew, what's your weekly haul? I So if you guys didn't remember from last weekly haul, Fantastic Four has been on my mind. Mm -hmm. It has. Big time. I think Fantastic Four is going to be a big move for the MCU moving forward. And so because of that, I did some soul searching. Mm -hmm. I did some searching. I did some uh, I did some VHS searching, okay. and I found this bad boy. Oh man, this thing is so sweet. Mm -hmm. The it's, thing, oh, uh, it's got Magneto in it. This thing is, yeah, yeah, dude. It is bit. I am so. If you remember from last episode, I bought five of these. Uh, of these Marvel books. Okay. So they're, they're literally right here. All of them. I'm on my last one. Okay. So in a week I've finished four of them. I'm on my last one. And I have been on a fantastic four crave. Found this bad boy on eBay. 
throw out an offer for five bucks. I freaking got it. They gave it to but me. Five bucks. Let, let the viewers know that Matthew does not own a VHS uh, player. I do not own a VHS player. And I do. And I, well, my movie's not playing anymore, but I was watching the oh, Batman. Oh, sounds about right. It, was, it ended. We've been going for two hours now. Over two hours. Um, but that is sweet. Just check that out, man. It's mint. The colors, and, and I've got my I've got my lights on, so the colors look a little bit different, but mm. when it's like natural, these, these are super vibrant. It's pretty minty up besides this little part. But it's not too bad. Well, so that is all I got this well, week. Well, I have got a haul for you guys. This week, I found myself some sweet comic books. I am trying to get more into comic books because my son is, he can read now. And I uh, want him to get more excited about reading and wanting to read. So I found myself somebody on marketplace and they just gave me this big old box of comic books and i'm going to show you guys just a few of them not a few of them like a, a good stack like check out these bad boys like this much um but there's i have a whole box um we're going to start with ghost rider some of the, i i love the the uh, face art on these just ghost rider and wolverine just killing it uh these guys uh, I'm going to try to frame all these, the ones I really like. Um, and this one right here with the Ghost Rider, I think is my favorite. It's just so, so, so cool. I love that. Now we're getting into Weapon X, Wolverine, baby. And uh, he's a little nude, but don't worry. He's covered up. By his uh, little uh, thingamajiggies. So these Weapon X guys. I got some Wolverine ones here as well. Uh, this one's probably my favorite art art cover. cover yeah, cover art. art. And uh, I'm gonna pr I'm gonna frame these. I'm gonna either grade them. I don't know if I should grade them. I don't, grading is so expensive, and I don't know if I want to do it. And uh, I'm just in love with just. All of these. These ones are actually this one, X Factor. This one is sweet with Cyclops in the, nice the middle game. there, and it's just uh, I want them hung up in my in all this. So these X Factor ones, I got all these guys with Cyclops. <laughs> oh, okay, you didn't. Okay, and then X Force First Edition. And I'm really pumped about this one. This is a first edition one that I was really happy. But I got a, bu a box full, but I think I'm just going to give those to my son and we can just get into reading those. Um, if you guys have a, a you know, family, I'd suggest getting into comic books. They're fun. I did get my son a comic book Bible, and I'm really cool about that. But that is episode six. For Goof and Goober, I believe it's episode six. Am I right on that? I, I'm pretty sure episode, episode six. six. We got it in the books. It is probably our longest, longest episode. There was so much to get to because of the football and the, the trailers. And uh, there was another thing I actually didn't want to talk about, but I couldn't even get to that. Um, and, uh, but guys, if you made it through this, thank you guys so much. I see there's some people still listening on, uh, Twitch as well as YouTube guys. Thank you. We love you guys. Um, make sure you like comment, let us know what's going on. And let, as well as, I mean, uh, the Thrun, my guy is interacting with us. Love that. Love to see you guys. Thanks, um, oh, is that your dad? That's oh, I did not know yeah. that. <laughs> hey, Dad. Uh, I did not know. Uh, but, uh, guys, yeah. thank you so much for <laughs> tuning in. And uh, we will probably see you next week. I appreciate you guys. Uh, we will see you. Before oh. I let you guys go, check out our merch store. 
check out our merch store in our Instagram page. We have a link tree now. I know we talked about that earlier in the episode, but if you guys wanted to support, rep the merch, mm-hmm. go ahead. Um, in the next week or two, my merch will be You got merch? Uh, I got a couple. I am getting a couple merch. I did not see that. Oh my gosh. I got to Okay, let's yeah, go. I, I got merch. some merch too, dude. And oh. so uh let's go. So, let's freaking get it. Um and then if you guys also um want to if you guys feel compelled to start your own podcast at some point, feel free. Um you can actually use our code for Riverside. Um Riverside is a free application, mm-hmm. by the way, so you, you don't have to pay for anything. We don't make any money off no, of it. It's no. just more like credit. But if you guys decide you guys want to start a podcast, this is our second or third episode with Riverside, and it has been it's been great. It's been a lot better than Discord that we used for yeah. our first like three We're episodes. Using Prism or as like well, that. yeah, but yeah, yeah, <laughs> using Prism. But this has been so much easier. Mm-hmm. So if you guys want to use it, um, we'll put a link in the description. You can use our link. Again, it's free. You don't have to pay for anything, but give it a shot. I always in- encourage when we started this podcast is we didn't know where to go. We just made content. We just had fun. Just being boys. Being boys, boys and boys, guys. Okay? But that's it for today's episode. Mm-hmm. Thank you guys so much. We will see you next week. Peace. Peace. Thanks for listening to the Double G Show. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel at The Goof and Goober Show. And why don't you check out our Instagram page at The Goof and Goober Show for even more content and drop a follow. Thanks again and have a wonderful day.